the beacon for the nation. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and a very good evening right here from Horizon TV Studios. My name is Faisal Qasim and this is the Live World Talk. And tonight we are tackling yet another sensitive topic for the third time since I started my career on journalism on this beautiful station that you tune, you tune to every single day to get entertained, educated, informed on matters Islamic. My name is Faisal Qasim and this is the live role talk. And tonight we'll be talking about cancer, which is the silent killer disease. We are in the midst of a pandemic that has hit the world. And in Kenya, it was first seen or first um, identified in 2020 March. That's when the president, His Excellency Uhuru Muge Kenyatta, confirmed the first case of coronavirus in the country. And uh, since then, we have been in and out of lockdown, different measures to try and curb the spread of COVID-19. But we are talking about something that has been with us for quite some time now, two decades. It has taken an upward spiral, an ascending trajectory. Just some quick figures about that. From 2012 to 2018, these are the figures that we managed to get. Cancer rose to at least 16%. That is within a span of six years, 2012 to 2018. From an average of 28,500 people uh, mortality rate to uh, 32,987. Simple arithmetic, simple calculation, something that is believed to be a lifestyle disease. And tonight, joining me in studio is none other than my sister that we've worked together on this path of cancer lobby support, name it. Her name is Sharifa Ismail Hakada, who is a co-founder and a member of Fadil Kada Leukemia Foundation. Salaam alaikum, my sister, and thank you so much for making time for us this evening. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm so happy to be here. Yes, my dear. How are you? I'm okay. Long and yourself? time. You know, we were just talking about it. I mean, the last time we were together, we actually physically met was in back in 2018, right? Yeah. And that was at a fundraiser event. Yeah, that was at a fundraising event mm -hmm. um, in South Sea. Yes. We were also like, it was a cancer event. Yes. We were trying to raise um, for kids who had cancer for yes. treatment abroad. Yeah. Yeah, and it was yes. an event that was uh, uh, characterized by a number of activities. We had Nasheed artists from Ibrahim Khan. Yes. We had some brothers from Isli who performed Nasheed as well. Yeah, we had, play area for yeah. children. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. yes. We and had food, food stalls. My yes. Goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Memories, memories, memories. Yeah. Um, for the interest of our viewers back at home, let's talk about Fadil Kada. How, how did it start? Okay, um, Fadil Kada Leukemia Foundation started in 2016. Mm. Um, it was just like, um, it wasn't planned or anything, but it's yes. just one of our friends um, whose, whose name is Leila yeah. um, had a son who was diagnosed with uh, leukemia. Baby and uh, yeah, baby Fadel Hamid, yeah. and he was only 15 months old. And uh, then uh, after that, um, she started taking her to uh, taking the baby to Gertrude's Hospital. And then after a session of uh, chemotherapy, then they advised her to go to India to do a, a bone marrow transplant, mm -hmm. which was a bit straining um, for her for her family. Um, the, it's costly, the treatment is costly, something like that, like a transplant yeah, yeah. Um, in India mm -hmm. um, is, uh, you can imagine, uh, it's, uh, it can cause a lot of stress for a yes. family, yeah. for yeah. a parent. Yeah, so they, we had to like, um, uh, like uh, spread the word around and then like um, do some some help out in any way and then mm -hmm. like collect mm -hmm. some money for her to uh, travel with the baby yes and that is how it started that Remind is how me it if was I'm wrong. i think at some point uh, baby fadl was at uh, kenyatta hospital what number 3d 
Yeah, he was. You know, I think they they changed. Um, they, they he was at Gertrude also, yes, then yeah, also yeah, at Kenyatta. Kenyatta yeah, well yeah. So yeah. And, and uh, that's we also met there a couple of times. And oh, you did. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, and and it, it was a sad state. Yeah, and looking at all those kids, amazing, yeah. beautiful smiles. Yeah. Suffering from this, Subhanallah. Lucia. So many children, so Goodness. many children. Yeah. So, and, and some from extremely, like, you know, poor families, mm -hmm. fam you know, they don't have um, uh, health facilities, they don't have, like, the money, uh, some don't even know, they know how, you know, uh, some don't understand the disease. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's really, in, be in, in Kenya, it's really bad. Marshall and yourself, together with uh, your counterparts, uh, that is Jamia Abdul Yusuf and yeah, Aisha Ahmed. Yeah. You guys have been doing a tremendous job, yeah, all these years trying to raise awareness about this disease, trying to raise funds to support these people, social support. And uh, mashallah, you've been on our case together with some group of brothers. I mean, we have been working together for quite some time now. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Yeah. yeah, it's it's been a journey. It's been quite a journey. Also for us um, as a foundation, mm -hmm. we have our own struggles. Yes. Yeah, because we um, solely depend on uh, our friends and, you know, the people on like platforms, social media, mm -hmm. Facebook and all these things. Mm -hmm. And um, but but alhamdulillah, we've helped quite a number of children, plus some some few adults here and there. And uh, yeah, we, I think we've done, alhamdulillah, we've done so much. And I can bear so witness much. to that. I yeah. can bear witness to that. And of course, uh, our annual walk. Yes. Every and October. And <laughs> yes. And except from Kibla to Kodogosho. Yeah. Except from so last year. Uh, yeah, yeah, the yeah? COVID uh, restrictions. Yes, COVID restrictions. That's yeah. what we didn't do. And we're hoping that uh, maybe, inshallah, if this, this year it's, uh, it's, it's getting better, I think. Yeah, I don't it's know. getting better, inshallah. Yeah, uh, but uh, we, are, we are hoping that, yeah. Uh, yeah, we do something also and the restrictions are lifted. Yes. So let's see. Hopefully. So we're going to work again? Uh, yeah, at the moment we are planning uh, this, uh, there's uh, like a food program. Okay. okay. Like, yeah, and... Uh, also, uh, pediatric, uh, uh, you know, we wanted to visit uh, kids in Eldoret, in mm -hmm. a hospital in Eldoret. Oh, so this and time is in Eldoret. Uh, yeah, and Asha is the one who is organizing all that mm -hmm. because she's now ba uh, based in Eldoret. So hopefully if all goes well and mm -hmm. the restrictions are not, you know, and we are allowed to do it, we will uh, definitely do the food drive. Well, and let me understand. To the best of my knowledge, mm -hmm. um, uh, there are usually two visits you organize. There is one that you go with entertainers and toys to Kenyatta that yeah. I've taken part of a yeah. co couple of times. Mm -hmm. And then there is uh, one that you usually visit counties. And uh, the other day you went to Kwale and then you went to Garissa. Yeah. So this is the one, this time you're doing it in Eldoret. This time we're doing it in Eldoret. And uh -huh. uh, uh, Asha is the one who is uh, like uh, mainly organizing, arranging for that. Okay. It's in the pipeline. I uh -huh. can't really say much about it um, at the moment. Okay. But uh, yeah, um, that's what, it, what that, that is what is in the pipeline. Nice. And uh, after that, uh -huh. I think depending also on, you know, the, the restrictions, mm -hmm. um, Let's see if we'll be able to do it in a hospital in Eldoret. Uh, Eldoret. What about the Kenyatta one? Uh, about the for, for for the cancer patients? Is it what three D? This time we did. You know the same thing that you you're explaining about. The, yeah, the, yeah. You're saying the kids uh, us going uh, with Toys, uh, gifts and everything, entertainment, entertainment, entertainment yeah, yeah. food, and all that. Uh, yeah. That one also. This time what they did, uh -huh. um, we just uh, arranged. Uh, like a gift, mm -hmm. gift hampers, gift hampers okay. and then we took to the parents, ah, now the mm -hmm. parents of the patients, mm -hmm. yeah, because we were not allowed, obviously, with all the because COVID the infections and everything, and yes, yeah, yeah. we were not allowed to um, uh, visit the, uh, the, the hospital, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but um, we did um, gift hampers and, you know, all these things, and mm -hmm. we gave it to the parents um, of the patients, amazing. the moms, yeah. Amazing, amazing, beautiful stuff. I mean, um, uh, my dear sister, you ladies, within a very short span, uh, 2018, 2021, you've done amazing stuff. You've been registered as an NGO. You've supported a couple. I have been part and parcel of some of these amazing projects. Now, once again, for the benefit of our viewers back home, what can you recount as some of your achievements as a foundation for as far as um, looking after these kids who are suffering from cancer and even adults for that matter is concerned. What can you recount of some of your achievements? 
Yeah, I mean, uh, basically we've, uh, we, we have, like we've had uh, kids whom we've taken to India. Mm. We've had, uh, and, and we've like completed uh, the treatment and everything, and some of them made it back home. And some, unfortunately, um, we lost in mm -hmm. India. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, at least we've we've done that. We've done uh, baby baby um, baby father. Okay, he passed on. We've we done two. We did two other boys, and uh, one Kadar baby Kadar passed yeah, on in yeah. India, uh, and then uh, the other little boy. We did over here locally, and he was operated on. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so we've done. Um, you know, when we say treatment, like the medical treatment is itself, mm -hmm. we've done a lot. Yeah, some we've even paid like partially, like, you know, some, some people like had started already like mm -hmm. going through the chemo, some children, they, and then halfway there, then they come to us for assistance, and then we try and raise the money, and uh, we um, help out now with the rest. There's some that are ongoing at the moment. We have um, a few kids that are still undergoing uh, chemo. Mm -hmm. And uh, also our um, colleague, uh, Jimia, also is doing um, like, like a school, uh, there's, you know, for patients who, for cancer patients who mm -hmm. are um, in school. Yeah. We're yeah. also helping with the fees. And uh, uh, that is what is actually ongoing at the moment. We're trying to collect also for that. We've paid like for a term for a boy who has survived cancer. And um, so he's going into form one. And uh, we are helping the family to, you know, for the education part to, f so that he can go on with his studies and everything. Mm. Alhamdulillah. And we pray that, you know, he, he's okay. Inshallah. You know, you ha they have to check them after every six months to mm -hmm. see um, if everything is okay, or is it there's there's any like in, you know? Um, mm. Nice. Yeah. Um, th one of the ongoing cases. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know whether it's already a closed case. Um, there's this um, kid that you're fundraising for, the one with the eye cancer. Yeah. Was supposed to be operated on. Yeah. Would you mind telling us about that? Yeah, that one is also ongoing. Um, mm. We're still, like I said, you know, the thing is, we have so many. Um, we have so many projects and you know you really can't say no like you know we have like a, a, a collection of um, boys you know a very small age who mm. have cancer yeah. and uh, we keep getting new requests you know we need help from like all over yeah mm -hmm. Mombasa mm -hmm. Nairobi everywhere Garissa yeah. Isiolo yeah so we do get that and you find it so difficult you can't say no and at the same time you can't cope like with too many um, yeah, because I mean, cases. looking at you guys as a source of hope. Yes, and, yes. Uh, I mean, you guys are the only ones who came out yeah. to, to support them on exactly. this journey. Yeah, yeah. and uh, also, like, I, I feel like if we got more um, assistance, you know, more uh, people who, like, um, would help, like, you know, volunteering or mm -hmm. also becoming members in our foundation, mm -hmm. uh, there's a small, like, charge that we, we, we do. Uh, we charge a small fee and then mm -hmm. you can become like a registered member and then like we all I feel like if we if we are together like we can take up more cases and we can help out more people mm -hmm. so for that particular boy going back to the boy with the cancer it's still you know going on the the, the chemo is still ongoing and uh, yeah so and it's it's so unpredictable because you don't know you know mm -hmm. as uh, for ca uh, cancer patients it's unpredictable you don't know whether how the treatment is going to go. Some people are told you have to do this many sessions. Like for example, you have to do 20 sessions and then after that, then you do a PET scan. And then after that, uh, then we tell you whether you're supposed to be on drug, mm -hmm. on cancer drugs, or mm -hmm. you're supposed to go for radiotherapy. So something like that, you, you really don't know like what's, how the treatment will go. Good. Let me ask you, how, how, how does that make you feel when you have invested in one of the projects, one of the patients for that matter, you've taken the responsibility, you have fundraised, you have um, taken them to India and all that, and then they fail to make it. How, how, how does that make you guys feel? Yeah, for me, I mean, that one is a personal thing because I... For this one case, one case in particular, uh, baby Kadar, um, 
I used to personally go there. They, they were treating him at uh, uh, Texas Cancer Center. And uh, we used to go see them and everything, and the mom also. Um, and like there was a bond there because I, I knew the family personally. I would go there, I would visit, I would go to the hospital, this and that. We would go back home, I, you know, together. So when I had the news, after that we, we, we got to a point where we got enough money to send him to, um, to India. And after a couple of, I think, months, he passed on. I'm not very sure whether it was weeks or months, but um, he, after that he passed on. And it, like when I got the information, it was like a blow. I, I couldn't, like, you know, I was like lost for words. I couldn't say anything. The person who called me was the uncle, and he told me that he has passed away. You know, it's like it was a total shock. And, you know, it's so painful, not that I'm related to him or anything, but j just the fact that you've been there through the journey, part of it at least, you've tried to help out, uh, you know, wherever you can. And uh, you know the baby, you know, you know him, you, you've laughed with him, you know, all these things. So it was really, it's, it's really, really, it takes a toll on you. Mm. And it's a very sad thing. So, but Alhamdulillah, like that, you know, uh, we pray that now the ones that are, you know, no, yeah, going through it. Yeah. yeah. And, they, and, and, they and, and of course, I do believe that there must be some positive cases as well. There, yes, uh, they there are. There must be success stories. Yes, they are. Right? Yeah. And that, I think, um, uh, my colleague, Jimia, um, 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 she's been ad updating us on all these things that are happening um, with the uh, uh, cancer patients in uh, Mombasa. Mm -hmm. So there's this one baby who's baby Faris who mm -hmm. has survived. I, I, he's finished. He completed the sessions yes. that he was meant Mashallah. to. Yes. And then uh, he's okay now. He's doing okay. So yeah. And uh, it's like a routinal thing where you have to go back just to check so that it doesn't Rika. Leak out or yeah, Rika. So there are chances like of it that. recurring uh, once it's yeah, treated and the chemo and everything. So yeah, there are chances of it recurring. Yeah, recurring. but through studies we know that you you know there's some cases where you go through or everything you do everything that they ask you to do, and then after like maybe a year or two years, you you hear that you know oh it's you know you have a relapse or something you know you have to go back to get checked because there's like. You've done this uh, procedure, and it's mm. showing that it's the cells are there. Mm. Nice. And so, yeah. So, 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 understanding what Fadil Kader does, and and, and and all this being part and parcel of this journey myself as well, um, it is safe to assume that Fadil Kader is more of a support group in terms of financial support, moral support, and solidarity support with these patients. Correct. Yes. And. Um, as you say, uh, financial support sometimes takes a toll in you. It's a challenge. Yeah. Have you just thought of maybe long-term solutions? Mm. We've discussed about this I know, a couple of times. So I don't know how far you are with that in terms of NHIF registration, maybe. Yeah, but then also um, with everything, last I think last time we had a conversation with you, or or my key, my colleagues had a conversation <laughs> with you. Um, so much has happened. Yeah. We've had the pandemic. Obviously, it's a blow to everyone. Mm. So, like, we we we've not been able to um, like go on with the plans that all the things that we were planning to do. Mm -hmm. And so, um, just also as other other people are complaining that you know financially they are unstable they're because of the yeah, yeah they're straining. So mm -hmm. even for us, um, it's it's uh, more or less the same thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, like I said, we we. Um, Obviously, if you're more, you, you gain more, you, you help out more. So mm -hmm. um, I would like to, you know, request, <laughs> uh, you, have, you know, the people who are watching this to help out. Mm -hmm. uh, to, you can register, you can uh, volunteer, mm -hmm. you can, you know, send M-Pesa and, uh, you know, any any help is will be appreciated. Let's talk about um, insurance, for example, right? And yeah. uh, this whole debate of... Um, the whole standpoint of Islam on matters insurance. 
Yeah. Right. We have the the the, the national hospital insurance fund. Yeah. That is supposed to be covering our medical. So it should be like our medical scheme or national medical scheme. Yeah. That is actually compulsory for some people who are employed. It's mm -hmm. deducted from their salaries with or without their consent because it's policy. Yeah. So I don't know how far we have tried to capitalize on this opportunity of NHF. I know there are debates um, Islamically. Um, on whether it's allowed or not. And I, I personally, as I was telling you, I, I was part of a lobby group that was trying to see how we can get a Sharia compliant NHIF, right? And even came up with, with a model, a concept paper that was sent to the CEO of NHIF and actually was presented as well to the commissioners of um, NHIF. But I, I I don't know how far how far it has gone from your end because being an organization that is majorly based on donations and as you said clearly we are in a pandemic that we have seen the ravaging economic effect as well so in this case and these patients are sick they still require these treatments they require this drug what happens then it's tough like you're saying. Um I'm, I mean, it's good news if the community is actually planning on something like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, that's news to me because even we had discussed it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Personally, I had discussed it with some people. And, you know, the fact that, um, I don't know, I feel like, you know, like the, there's a, within the communities that we have in Nairobi, mm -hmm. we have the, especially, okay, the Muslim community. Yeah. I don't think we have, like, you know, um, anything like that, like, let's say, like, a medical policy or something. That medical can, scheme, basically. Yeah, yeah. a yeah. scheme. Yes. I don't think we have any. We do don't we? have any, no, because don't. if you look at the Hindu community, yeah. they do have one. If you look at the other communities... Ismailis. Uh, yeah, Ismailis, all that, they, they, have, they have something going on within mm -hmm. their own community. Yes. But uh, with us Muslims, it's very, it's, um, it's very tough, you know, for so many people because even, um, even if you, like, you're, you're, like from, like you're, you're working, you know, middle class, middle class um, uh, family, you still, you can't cope with the, with the medical um, uh, bills. You can't. So it's, it's hard. I think for, for us, like as Muslims, mm -hmm. we should, we should um, do something about that. We should we should get help also from you know like like a policy like that. I don't know what the religion says exactly, but mm -hmm. yeah. To the best of my knowledge, um, I have very extremely limited knowledge on Islam, mm. and um, to my understanding, you see how insurance works is to ensure that they are as liquid as possible. So basically, what happens is that when you invest your money, when you save with a particular insurance, then what happens is that they invest that money. Yeah. They invest that money. Mm. So that is where the scholars have a problem with. Accepting that. The investment. Yeah. Because the insurance being conventional insurance, mm -hmm. they can invest in anything. EABL, baiting, whatever. Is it a breweries company? It's a betting company. And these are things that are clearly not allowed in Islam. Yes. So basically, mm -hmm. I think that's basically where um, the bone of contention is. Mm -hmm. So in the concept paper that was presented, uh, it was actually prepared by uh, brothers uh, Jumon Vudi, um, Abu Aira Faisal Hussein. Um, we had brother, Bra brother Bashir. Um, basically, some people who are well conversant with um, Islamic finance okay. and how the system works. Yeah? yeah. So some of us were there just to support them and looking at the model and everything. So according to my limited knowledge, that paper gave alternative avenues of investment on how to go about the whole insurance idea. So is it acceptable or we still don't know? Because we still you're don't saying know. that, you know, the scholars are, I don't know, the, the, the information I got was that the scholars themselves are trying to see if it can be accepted no, in this some particular way. One, in the group we had, we, have, we had scholars in the group. We had the likes of Sheikh Badru Jafar, Sheikh Abdul Latif Abdul Karim. We had, we, we had scholars in the group. Yeah. We had scholars in the group who were part and parcel of that. Okay. And we had several meetings to discuss the model that we want to take. And we agreed the concept paper was prepared and presented. Yet yeah. to get feedback on that.
Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah. but um, basically, the, the 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 idea is that this was supposed to provide an alternative. So we don't know how far NHIF are with that, right? So yeah. maybe as soon as we get that feedback, then we can be able to share the message to or Muslims. do something about it. Yeah. yeah, yeah inshallah. Along with that, um, Jamia Mosque actually uh, two weeks back they had their AGM. Yeah. And one of the items that was discussed was that. Yeah. Jamia Medical Scheme. Mm -hmm. They want to introduce something like that because Jamia must spend millions of money every year. Medical support. Mm -hmm. Millions of mm -hmm. money. You know, every time people come with their invoices and everything, and it's just, it's, it's getting a bit overwhelming. So, thinking of a long term solution, I think Jamia is coming up with that. Yeah. yeah and if. Mm -hmm. I think we, I mean, that is good news. I mean, uh, but um, I think also maybe we, we hopefully we, they will give us like a bit of information <laughs> yeah, on that. So yeah, we, we are also like, uh, that's good news. It's, uh, yeah, And you know, nowadays, because we have also like the insurers like mm -hmm. uh, Tawakal, Takaful. Sorry, Takaful. Takaful insurance. Yeah, Takaful yeah, insurance, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that is uh, Islamic based, right? Uh, exactly. And that was going to be my so next question. So, that's good news because uh -huh. that was not like if you if you look at it like before, we mm -hmm. didn't have that. And now we have uh, Takaful. So, insurance, I, yeah. yeah, I'm sure that, you know, um, maybe under consultation with yeah. the scholars, we, we they can maybe work out a policy for everyone. Have you thought of maybe partnering with the Takaful Insurance on these matters and yes, maybe yes. doing a drive for the whole community to yeah. um, come on board and get a card, for example, for some of these services? Have you thought about that maybe? No, now that you've brought it up, like I said, there's information that there's something that I've learned from you. Nice. Actually okay. now, yeah. Because we, we had talked about it and mm -hmm. there was no... A solid, uh, you know, response, or mm -hmm. or there was nothing that came out of it. So mm -hmm. we we were there, you know, because some people were saying, oh, we we are not allowed as Muslims to take policies or covers as such, mm -hmm. and others were like, you know, what do you do if you have uh, a patient and the the bills are, you know, overwhelming? Can what let, can yeah, you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah true, it's true, not true, that true, you're true, doing true. it, you know, out of yeah. your will, mm -hmm. but you have to. It's a must. And things like that, like the the way you mentioned NHIF, like, mm -hmm. the, you know, it's compulsory, like yeah. you have to take it. Yes. So, yeah, I'm sure that we will, uh, whatever will be the outcome mm -hmm. for what we are discussing right <laughs> yes. now with yes. Jamia Mosque. Yes. We, inshallah, we, we look will for your like uh, Look for a copy of Friday Bulletin, uh, the issue of uh, 25th of June, which is last, last Friday. Last Friday. Yes, the, okay. the, there is some information about that. And actually the chairman, Mr. Osman Warfa, yeah. mentioned about what you just said, the Hindu community has, the, 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 the Banianis have, mm. um, the Ismailis have, um, some people, some domain like the Catholics. Yeah. They have a lot of institutions. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, health facilities around the country. So medical institute, medical uh, is not one of their major problems because they have structures to deal with them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So yeah, so Jamia medical scheme is upcoming, inshallah. So let's hope uh, we can be part and parcel of that yes, journey. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. We can be, yeah. Um, let, let's talk about matters. Before we talk about how the government is dealing with this pan with, with this disease, mm -hmm. cancer, because His Excellency the President, the last time he spoke about it was on 2nd of August 2019 mm -hmm. at the memorial service of former um, Governor Joyce Laboso, mm -hmm. who died from cancer as well, right? Yeah. And remember we are into that season, July, August, July and August actually, we lost three prominent personalities in this country from this disease yeah in 2019 remember mm -hmm. yeah we yeah. lost three prominent personalities it was bob kalimo former safaricom ceo right mm -hmm. um joyce laboso the governor and uh ken okoth former kibra mp all oh, the three an MP, okay. yeah, yeah he was an mp mm -hmm. and, and and all the three died from this disease cancer yeah. mm -hmm. so it it it's it, 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 it's it, it's that season it's that period once again yeah. right mm -hmm. and doctor says it boils down to characters what's your experience with with, with this disease with cancer like what do you think 
brings about this cancer? Is it lifestyle? If yes, then what exactly are we not doing right? It's so hard to pinpoint that, you know, actually, you know, uh, if you do a research, you know, mainly they say that, yeah, lifestyle is a factor, you mm -hmm. know, the way you eat, I think um, your environment um, and, uh, you know, pollution, all these things, these are all factors that, you know, um, and, and some of They're it is, is some of it, this. yeah, contributing, some of it is actually also genetic. Mm. You can have, you can just really? like, yeah, you can, you can have uh, maybe somebody in the family. It's hereditary? Yes. And then you also have like, for example, like uh, breast cancer, you can have like an existing uh, female um, figure in your family. And then you find that the children in the same line also um, kind of uh, are prone, like, you know, you're prone to that, like you can get that. So there are so many factors to it. It's really, really hard to pinpoint um, exactly, you know, what the cause is. But there are so many reasons as well. If someone talks about uh, processed foods. Yeah. Talk of the canned foods. Mm. Uh, that's, uh, that's part of li the, the lifestyle. The well, lifestyle, yeah. yes. Yeah. So yeah. the foods that we eat, uh, all these things, you know, also the, they say that the oil, you know, that you, you know, Excessive if, if you have something like ghee and, and olive oil, that's um, easily digested and it, it does not like, it does not become toxic in mm -hmm. your system, mm -hmm. in your digestive system. Mm -hmm. So things like the vegetable oil, which is something that, you know, it does not, uh, it hardens, mm -hmm. it does not break down easily. They say that that also um, is a contributor. You can, you can, it can cause colon cancer. Really? Yeah, and stuff like that. Sometimes in Western, I think it was in 20, 2018, 2017 there. Yeah. Um, uh, Western had had actually a high number of um is it throat cancer throat cancer yeah was it because was it that uh that Hot story tea. of uh <laughs> yeah <laughs> i had that yeah i had that my story. producer is actually from <laughs> western kenya and he's watching right now so uh, uh, apparently you yeah. know it, it it's also a contributing factor yeah you know yeah hot tea so guys would argue that what what what, what happens you have been socialized to yeah. take tea when it's hot, you know? Yeah. Some more Chinese motors, yeah. Yeah, also, also that there was an article, I don't know, I can't remember where I read that exactly, where there was an area where the people were throwing garbage mm -hmm. and uh, there were children that were born with all these different cancer, you know, eye, eye cancer, all these mm. things um, in that particular area, like the number was huge. Um, that was some time back, I really can't remember. But uh, yeah, they say also, um, the talk, the pollution, you environmental know, yeah, pollution, yeah, mm. toxins and stuff like that. Nice. Yeah. Subhanallah. Nice to know. I mean, that's that's that's. May Allah protect us from this disease. I mean, yeah. You know, um, uh, that's how we are taking a break, and uh, we're <coughs> going to be back talk about the situation of cancer in this country and. What exactly His Excellency the President in his address of the nation on the 2nd of August 2019 promised Kenyans and what exactly is happening right now on the ground. It is a silent killer indeed. As of 2018, as I mentioned to you, the figures, the average was at 32,987. 2019, COVID came into this world. 2020, it, it hit Kenya badly. And here we are focus on COVID-19 pandemic, going back to our lifestyle. We are very easy and prone to forget. Going back to processed foods, canned foods, fizzy drinks, not protecting our skins when going outside. I mean, of course, exposing ourselves to possible skin cancer, among many others. This and many more will be our discussion after the break. Don't you go away. Let's pay your bills.
Horizon TV, the beacon for the nation. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا على الصلاة حيا على الصلاة حيا على الفلا حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله Horizon TV, the beacon for the nation. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good evening and welcome back to Live Real Talk. With me, Faisal Qasim in studio with my dear sister, Sharifa Ismail Hakada, that we have worked together since 2016? 2015, 2016? 2016. 2016, yeah? 2016, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, number of projects we've done together. We've done Sa'ali, we've done, uh, is it a food bazaar? Yeah, we've done uh, also the one in South Sea. South we've done Sea, Kenyatta Hospital. Kenyatta Hospital visits goodness. I yeah. miss those visits, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, Muslim Academy has already did one. Yeah, also Muslim, Muslim Academy. Academy. Yeah. yeah, that yeah, was yeah. a fundraising for yes. there were two boys. There were two boys, um, Mukhtar and Kader. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Mm. See, I told you guys, we've worked together. Come a <laughs> long way. <laughs> Yeah. Alhamdulillah. I mean, it's great. We were talking about lifestyle, yeah? yeah. And uh, it being a contributing factor to this pan uh, this disease. I don't want to call it a pandemic yet. It's not been declared a pandemic yeah. by the WHO. Yes, this disease, the silent killer, cancer, lifestyle. What exactly contributes? I don't uh, As I say, the fizzy drinks, the, the canned food, processed. Mm. I don't know the name, but if I'm forced, maybe sausages, mm. you know, um, the ones that have been processed and all that. My colleague, Karagane Mamlole, is the one actually who taught me about that. There was a time I was seriously, um, I had seriously missed, I don't want to use the word craving because the connotation is yeah. to mean something else. <laughs> yeah. But I had missed sausages, so <laughs> we went to a friend's coffee house just around CBD and I wanted, I ordered for some. I'm like, no, give me twin sausages and yeah. I'm like, bro, be very careful about this. Yeah. That's why he told me this is uh, one of the possible contributing factors um, that puts you at risk of getting cancer. And so many other diseases, yeah. Really? Mm. Like which ones? Uh, I think diabetes, you know, Goodness. also I don't know. Okay. So with cancer, with cancer, also sugar. I mm -hmm. feel like sugar is also. I don't know why uh, people don't talk about it, but sugar is also um, a contributing factor. Yeah, it's 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 uh, it's a main. You know, everything. And if you look nowadays, everything like mm -hmm. even 
uh, for us, if you're a parent, you, you, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. You know, these things of buying kids donuts and everything has sugar in it. Bread, mm -hmm. the normal bread has sugar in it. Every mm -hmm. single thing you buy in the market today has a lot of, you know, sugar content in it. And they say that it's not actually healthy. Also for the kids that we bring up, you have to be careful, you know, what they're eating, what they're carrying for break. Mm -hmm. uh, Listen to this. A research mm -hmm. that was released in August 2019, 12th of August 2019, the BMJ study, it's known as the BMJ study, yeah. showed a 10% increase in the pro proportion of ultra-processed foods in the diet was associated with 12% risk of overall cancer and 11% risk of breast cancer. Mm. These findings are to the strong body of evidence linking poor diet with overweight, stroke, ob obesity, and cancer risk. Yeah. Goodness. Yeah. So it's all uh, taking caution, right? Oh, you yes. You have to mind what you're putting in your mouth. Mm -hmm. um, you have to exercise regularly. And um, in this highly convenient water, city yeah. where it's always about, especially our community, I mean, the Muslim community, we know ourselves better. It's mm. either picky picky, tuk tuk, Uber, you know, mm. even from point to point. I mean, we rarely exercise. Also, sitting a lot in the office, you can go in the office the whole day, you're just seated. No movement, no, no nothing. No movement, yeah. So, Goodness. I mean, such things are really, really bad for you. No. Ah. Interesting. Thank you. You are really educating us here today. Talk about what the government is doing. And um, of course, I cannot, if I'm talking about the government, then let's talk about the epitome of the government, and that is the executive, His Excellency the President, on the same date while addressing the congregation and the mourners at uh, the Just Laboso Memorial. He promised a couple of things. One, radiology centers in at least three counties. Mm -hmm. He promised 10 chemo chemotherapy centers. He promised to upgrade MTRH to teach oncology. He promised as well to capacitate the Kenyatta University Hospital for oncology, and for basically to address um, uh, oncology, to teach oncology, so as to increase the capacity, build um, the number of the oncologists that we have in the country to address this disease. You are active in that. I've tried to look from this, what the president had promised. I didn't see anything. You are active. Maybe you saw something or maybe you know something that I don't. What is exactly happening? Do you have all this, what the president promised? There's nothing really that is happening. And uh, there's, there's, you know, the, the, the strangest thing is that even for patients who are sent to do PET scans, um, there's only one institution, there's only one hospital that mm -hmm. has that um, um, the, that service, um, the, the Kenyatta, uh, sorry, um, this, uh, the hospital, Aga Khan Hospital, has, uh, they do that. And uh, one scan, actually, mm -hmm. it costs around uh, 70,000. Really? Yeah, for a PET scan. And then when you, like, uh, the problem we're, most people are facing is that when you book yourself, there's like a huge line. You know, it's like there's a huge queue. There are so many people who are coming all over um, the country for just that one scan. So I feel like um, if, I don't know, the Ministry of Health or whoever is responsible uh, in this kind of thing, you know, they should look at that. You know, at least they should uh, make sure that, they, you know, you have, uh, you can, you get access to uh, uh, services like that, PET scans and all these things, uh, radiotherapy, machines um, in different counties so that people don't have to come all the way from, for example, uh, Isiolo mm -hmm. to Nairobi and some, you don't even have family in Nairobi so it, it, it you know, it costs double, it's more stressful, mm -hmm. um, you're, you're caring for someone who is sick and uh, you have to do all this traveling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some patients cannot even take the travel. You know, some, some people are very sick. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's really, really tough. So I think that the government or the, the Ministry of Health should help people. They should make sure that people get um, access, you know, in all count counties. I mean, uh, he promised to put uh, the 10 chemotherapy centers are supposed to be um, spread out, and one of the radiology centers are supposed to be in Garissa County to serve the northeastern and the larger northern area, you know, mm -hmm. uh, to serve all. Karibu chai, my dear. Thank you. Sandro Kambeki na Jumia and Aisha that Nkuja and welcome. Yes, yeah, so he was supposed to um, spread that out. Ten chemotherapy centers, ten chemo centers for the for heaven's sake. SubhanAllah. Yeah. This thing will go a long way in addressing this thing. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Right now, how many oncologists do we have in this country? Mm -hmm. Especially pediatric oncologists. Yeah, there are very few. So I think also, like, if, um, um, if they... Oncologists, um, one thing that I'm getting here as of November 26th of November 2019, um, there are only 16 radiation oncologists, 10 medical physicists. 35 oncology nurses, 27 therapy radiographers, and three nuclear medicine physicians. Um, check this, a total is uh, 26 plus 35, that's 41. Is that in, does that cover the whole country? Or yes, the whole country. The, this is the whole country. We know about this is the whole country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that is, uh, I mean, we're talking about the whole um, cancer wing for example, right? Um, so 16 plus 10, that is 26, plus 35, that is 51, is it? Oh gosh, yeah. Is it uh, 50, 26, no, that's 61. Yeah. 61 plus 27, that is uh, 88. Yeah. 88 plus 3, that is 91. So if you're thinking about uh, people to handle cancer, uh, cases, the whole of this country, then we're looking at 91. I hope I'm right. I'm just trying to calculate from the top of my head. That is 16 plus 10, 26 plus 35, uh, uh, 61, 90, yeah. 90, 91. You know, um, basically it's, uh, that's 91 people to handle uh, cancer, the whole of this country. That is sickening. That is sad. And I mean, imagine if MTRH would be upgraded to teach oncology and Kenyatta University Hospital would be, would be upgraded as well to teach oncology and uh, a minimum, give or take, we have at least a hundred graduates in this country every other year graduating from this course to beef the manpower in our hospitals to address this um, silent killer disease. Imagine the cases that would be able and the lives that we would be able to save. You know, it is quite sad, right? Yeah, it's quite sad. Uh, very, 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 very sad. But uh, nonetheless, um, I'm seeing Obura walking on to the set. Um, I mean, Chai Yangu na Mimi Pia. Sharifa Karibu Chai. Karibu, 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 Karibu Chai. Thank you so much, Obura. Um, uh, for the tea. Basically, um, this are uh, some of the figures that uh, we are having, and I'm told we need to take a very short break right now. Abruptly, apologies for that. Nonetheless, I have seven minutes to complete the show, but let's just take this uh, small break to address some technical hitch, and then we will be back in a very short while. Please do not touch that dial. Horizon TV, the beacon for the nation. Allah Taala fi muhkam tanzilihi ba'da ubi Allahi min al-shaytan al-rajim. 
na saha kutoka pwani hadha din qala allah qala ar rasul qala as sahabatu hum ulul irfani intaha ile kuongoza kwenye njia iliyo nyoka sikizeni hadithi hii ya mtume alayhi salatu wasalam hakuna atakayesha kumfungia mtu mlango ambaye mwenyezi mungu aliyemfungulia kuimarisha imani yako thabit qulubana ala dinik wa ala ta'atik kana na mashekh wetu kutoka pwani kwenye mimbar mimbar zinamwakilisha mtume sallallahu alayhi wasallam ni jumamosi na wakati saa tatu usiku katika horizon tv runinga wipendayo Horizon TV the beacon for the nation Horizon TV, the beacon for the nation. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome. Back, you know, I'm not a fan of white tea, but I mean, this this is amazing. Sherifa, how do you find it? Really? Yes. No, I hope you're not saying that because it's just. The weather, the weather is really cold, so <laughs> it's uh, very calming. Yeah. Yeah, very cozy. You're trying to sell me out. Eh? You can be <laughs> allowed to back at home that happy via to Moshe is in a kuna kuna joto to joto temperature. Yeah, no. That's what you're trying to do it directly, you know. The unspoken message is quite strong. No, the atmosphere is great. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. As we, we, we were finalizing our conversation about um, uh, basically this whole conversation of cancer and uh, you guys as Fadl Kada, what's in for you? What are you guys planning right now, moving forward? Yeah, we're planning um, <clears throat> to, like uh, I've mentioned this earlier, uh, what, what is in the pipeline mm -hmm. is um, the the Eldoret um, the, the the for the we are, we are trying to go and visit the normal visits that we do you know September is the month of awareness cancer um, childhood cancer mm -hmm. awareness yeah. so the plan was that we were going to go and uh, visit and of course take some cities and maybe yeah. gift hampers including toys and you know snacks and all these things and then um, <clears throat> from there then um, we we get it to them and then uh, but with the COVID thing I don't know now if it's going to happen so let's wait and see so that yeah, is one of the things and, yeah, yeah, yeah that's one of the things that were actually is actually ongoing um, and as I said, uh, Asha is the one who is like uh, um, the main lead, yeah, in that. arranging yeah. and yeah, all that. Mm -hmm. And then also the like a food, uh, um, you know, food programs. Also, we do. We were planning on doing also food programs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So like uh, the iftar, like now the one that we did during Ramadan also. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there was a food program and mm -hmm. uh, food uh, iftar uh, hampers were distributed. And uh, yeah, that kind of thing. We we also did recently a well. We also did a well. Mashallah, mashallah. Yeah, yeah. And definitely you need money for orphanage. the Dorit project and uh, the yeah, cancer Yeah, now whatever we are, we are planning, mm. or, or, of course, depending on the on you know if whether these restrictions are going to be uh, uplifted or mm. no. Uh, Insha'Allah, we are hoping to do you know much more, and and as we do that, there's also you have to remember that the these cases that are ongoing mm -hmm. um, for the babies that are having the kids who have who have cancer. Yes. 
some are, you know, they, they do these chemo therapies on a monthly basis, and it's a never-ending um, process. process. Exactly. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. For the it's month of um, this Cancer Awareness Month, definitely you do need resources for that, right? Yeah, we do. So I want you to look right straight into this camera and talk to those people who are watching your back at home and yeah. tell them how they can come in and support, please. Okay, so um, if uh, anyone would like to join our foundation, um, please um, you can contact uh, uh, 0724506911 and we will give you more details. And we also have a pay bill number, uh, which uh, I believe is going to be put in, in the program yeah. later. Uh, uh, please, um, you can donate anything or you can even volunteer if uh, you're in Mombasa if you're in Nairobi uh, we have uh, different uh, offices uh, in different counties um, so we would really appreciate your help and uh, please anything that you can do we will really appreciate it Wow thank you thank you thank you um, and, 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 and as we are wrapping it up uh, I don't think I have anything else to, to add. First of all, thank you. So let me just finish off this and then I can give you the opportunity to give you a parting shot. Um, to the viewers back at home, there's a joke we make with our friends, with my friends, that there are, there are three key things in this country that will finish your fat bank account. Finish it off, totally. Number one is a court case. A court case will seriously drain your resources. It doesn't matter the number of years that you've been saving. Most of the time, most of the people you've seen, court cases seriously drain them. Seriously do drain them. That is all. Secondly, is politics. What? Apologies for that. Secondly is politics. Politics really do... Are we on air? I suppose not. I suppose not. We've been cut off air. You good? is the second thing that uh, really drains our resources or your resources for that matter and the last one that you have no control of is diseases diseases really drain your resources as well so it's not by choice but rather it's a test from Allah and our capacity differs from one person to another not everyone has the capacity to handle um, a patient right and thus you have the existence of amazing people like um, Sharifa, Jimia, Ahmed, and the whole Fadl Kada team, and many other groups and institutions and organizations that do actually fundraising for such initiatives. For that matter, today it's them, other people, Ra, Abdul Kareem, Baby Fadl, Baby Kareem, all babies. They did not choose to be in that particular situation. They did not. Tomorrow it might be you or your kid who will be in that situation or position. And you will expect people to come and stand with you in solidarity at that time. And that's where the time sometimes fake friends come about. So for you not to term other people as fake friends, remember... It will forever be done unto you what you do unto others. So please, let's just come out and stand with our brothers and sisters in this case. Let's support where we can. If you can be a member of this foundation, go ahead and register today. If you can't, you're so busy, then please, from whatever Allah has blessed you with. 755096. 755096 is the pay bill number. Account is Fadl Kada. 755096. Account is Fadl Kada. Please do the needful.
for that. Do need it. Do the needful. Your thousand, ten thousand, five hundred thousand will go a long way in supporting these amazing people in this amazing project that they do. Apologies for the technical hitches once again, and thanks so much for keeping us company. Sherifa, any last ones? Yeah, no, I would just encourage everyone um, to help out. This mm -hmm. thing is uh, nationally, it's a uh, it's a very, um, you know, tough on families yes. and any help whatsoever mm. will be appreciated. And again, we have cancer awareness programs, mm -hmm. you know, in, in remote areas in the country. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you need funds for that. Yeah. We have ongoing, you know, treatment for children, which you cannot interrupt. You cannot stop because mm -hmm. of the, you know, uh, if you don't have money and stuff like that. These are really, really needy families. Um, I would like to ask um, people from our con community, you know, from all over the country to assist. Mm -hmm. And um, we actually put on display, we are very transparent. Every little penny that comes in uh, is accounted for and the mm -hmm. public knows um, about what our transactions are. Mm -hmm. And um, we really, really um, help we've helped a lot of families mm -hmm. and so therefore I think we would be like the right if, if you wanted to um, assist in any way we would be the yeah. right uh, people, people to, to, go to yeah yes perfect go to thank you so uh, much uh, uh, welcome go to the browser fadlkadaleukemia.org fadlkadaleukemia.org go to the website search look for them look at their projects and um, you can become a member become a volunteer and you'll follow the procedure after that thank you so much see you next week same place same time sorry once again for all those technical hitches it happens we live we learn the day you stop learning is the day you stop living assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh